Hello, welcome to the stressful time of the year, testing. I'm going to walk you through steps into creating a test using TestWiz. My name is Tammy Cheatham. Our agenda for today, we're just going to go over a little bit about what TestWiz is. We're going to look at the item bank and then we're going live. I'll be actually walking you through steps to create that test creating the test administration to set it up, and then to print uh, the student test tickets. Remember that you are each other's spark for this test was process. Whatever tests are created in your building on your site, you can access and use. Um, make sure that you work together if you are teaching uh, doing a team teaching situation. You can work together to create the test so you both can access it. If you uh, both teach third grade, you can create that test together and then are able to share that. Uh, make sure that you help each other with the design. Uh, there's power in numbers. As we work together today, remember wherever you are, be all there. Um, with so many things uh, ironed in your fire, I know that that's hard sometimes. We have to remember misery is optional. You can shut this webinar off at any time and then come back to it. Um, you need to make sure that you reflect on your classroom and the needs of your classroom. Um, if you don't need uh, much support, move at your own pace. Go on through, walk it through. Um, but if you do need help, um, I am more than happy to help you. After you've went through this webinar, if you still need somebody there, um, I will surely come out. I can work one-on-one -on -one with teacher. I can work with small groups. Um, I can work for a short amount of time, a longer amount of time um, during a teacher's prep time. I'm sure i um, able to help and do whatever works for you in your school. By the end of the webinar, you'll be able to describe what TestWiz is, log on to the TestWiz site, create that assessment, set up your test administration, and then create those test tickets for students. What is TestWiz? TestWiz is designed to be a formative assessment. It can be used as a post-test after you've done a unit to see what your students um, remember from the information. It can be used as a pre-test measure. That way you can see where your students are, what you need to hit a little bit harder. And it can also be used just as a practice test for NSCAS. So lots of different um, reasons and, and the whys to use TestWiz. A couple things that are new in TestWiz, Students can type directly into the test was now with um, open response questions uh, the, or the writing prompt or those test entry, text entry items. Um, there's also rubrics that have been added for the ELA. So if a test, a student types in there and then you can pull up the rubric and then give that kid a, a, kid a score and then you can enter that manually into um, their uh, test reporting. And then once a student has submitted a test, you can view the results immediately. Also, students need that test ticket to be able to log on. Um, you can limit the time. You can set up um, as short as a class period to take that test. You can open it up for a couple hours. You can leave it for a whole day. Um, lots of different variations of that. And then, but I would recommend to make sure that collect those test tickets when you're done so that way they don't have that information just flying around. And the new science standards have been uploaded, so that's a plus. TestWiz offers grades 3 through 8 um, for math, science, ELA, and social studies. That's included in the Nebraska assessment contract. That's what most of, schools, most of the schools are licensed for. If your school chooses to purchase additional licenses um, beyond the grades 3 through 8, you sure can do that because if you look over there, their coverage area goes um, from K through 12 in math, ELA, and social, or math and ELA. Uh, grades 3 through 12 in science, and then the 6 through 12 for social studies. So just talk with your um, school administrator just kind of see if that would be an option for you. I thought it was also important that they have a lot of different um, acronyms and different um, uh, abbreviations. So I kind of compiled that and put it all in one place for you. So you will see um, when we get to the item bank um, how these different acronyms are used. Um, the difficulty is pretty good. It's it's the level of difficulty of an item if it's low, medium, or high. That Bloom's taxonomy gives you the classification of the item if it's recall, if it's analyzing. 
And then the type of the item, um, it gives you all those, the multiple choices, MC, open response, OR, and so on. Um, the PP indicates that um, paper pencil is required for the student. And then the TEI is that technology enhanced item. Those items are, um, you might have a drag and drop, you might have rearrange, um, anything that's interactive on the online test. Not all of the test items have TEIs, but you do have to remember if you do use a TEI, it can only be administered online. So that test is only good online, not paper pencil. It cannot be printed off. So that's important to remember. I'm going to take you to the live side. This is what your screen will look like um, when you get on that ne.testwiz.net. If your school has not rolled over to the single sign-on, you can still access TestWiz using this website right here. So make sure that you, you do that. Um, by this summer, all school systems will be uh, required to have the single sign-on. It's moving over to that. If you um, forgot your username and your password, um, try entering your email address and then click on forgot password and it will send you a new link to recreate that password. And then if you don't remember any of it, make sure you ask your test administrator and then they can uh, make sure you make that easier for you. So I'm going to switch over to the live side and click on login. You come up to the, the main um, welcome page, I guess. And over here on this side, there's training and there's some help documents. If you get to a point and you're like, I just can't remember this and I need to, need to dig deeper, you can certainly do um, click on either one of those. The training videos are pretty good. Um, but also, again, uh, you can sure use me as a resource. I'll be out to help you in a GIF. Go click on Utilities to start creating a test. Now you can see at the top you have, uh, you're going to go click on Test Management. It drops down and you want to go to the first one to Test Specifications. Slide over to create or edit an item bank test. Okay, here's where it's going to give you some selections. You can create that new test. Um, some people have asked if you've created tests last year with TestWiz and you want to utilize those, but maybe you need to change a couple of your test items. Maybe you need to remove some things. Maybe you want to switch the order around a little bit. You can click on then copy the test and then um, it'll bring it back and you can go and edit it. So we'll do that a little bit later. Right now, create new test, click on next. The test abbreviation, I like to go ahead and just use something that I'm gonna remember. So you can see I've created some different ones and, and now I've come up to doing this because this does not do it for me. So I'm just gonna go in here, GR, and I'm gonna do, let's do, um, I'll do fourth grade again, and it's going to be science, and then I'm going to do 426, okay, because I'm, you know, that might be the standard number. In the title, or in the abbreviation, and the name, you cannot use periods or spaces. And I'm just going to do the very exact same name because I like to keep things simple, so I remember. Select the grade, next. Select the item bank. Now, the navigate item bank is all the new questions that have been developed. The C4L bank is those that have been um, in the C4L and they've rolled over. I would suggest using a combination of both. Um, that just gets you into more using the navigate um, items and you'll see the difference because you'll be able to tell them on your test items. I'll show you that. I select the group. I'm going to do science, so that's where the new standards for science are. If you were going to do math, ELA, or social studies, you'd pick Nebraska academic standards, science standards. Then it automatically comes up because I don't have a choice to select the subject. It comes up science. If I click the drop down, it's still science. Um, don't worry about this box right now. Select my grade. My grade is fourth grade. Next. And it'll also let you do some subsections. I'm just going to click um, or systems as a subsection if you knew what that was, um, if there's a specific one you can, or if you want to select all of them. Then you can select the specific standard. 
Um, I'm just going to go up here and select this first one, but you can see, again, behind them how many test items are available for that standard. And if you hover over this, then it tells you what the standard is. Okay, so now when I click that, it shows me all the different test items that are available for what I have selected. You can see it has 43, so I could keep on going across the bottom to see all these. Now, unfortunately, the new test was does not did not keep how C4L had a keyword search. This does not have that, but I put in a, a help ticket to test with to see if we could get that back because I know that's been a, a lot of um, comments from teachers that they would really love to have the keywords so they don't have to switch all switch look through all these because if I wanted to see this exact test item I'd have to click on it it brings it up I read it I get to go see down here this is what I was talking about if it says navigate in this item bank it's from the new test questions then over here it tells the level of difficulty the blooms um, level the depth of knowledge and then it tells you points now, then I have to close out of this, and I have to go to the next one. See if that's right. So, I would suggest, if you're new to TestWiz, if, if you haven't been doing this a lot, I would just cut, click on Quick Test Builder. And then you can select how many test questions there are. I'm going to select 17. Open response, I'd like to have two open responses. For this, there are no technology enhanced items available so I don't have to worry about that shows me now from what I've selected here I have six test questions that will be high five low and six medium so I can build my test and I can switch it if I want to I can make more I can switch it around build my test now it shows me the items that have been selected if you wanted to go down here and select a few more to add to this you can it already shows you in the box what ones are checked. They are the ones that have been selected by the quick test builder. So I can go now and add more. Then I click next. And it shows me a preview of what the test will look like. Again, students will not see this part. And it tells you the correct answer, tells you just lots of information about each test question. Okay, if you had made a copy of your test, let's say you just want to go and make a copy because you want to do it for your second section of science four. And then you can move these questions up and down. That way it puts them in a different order if you're worried about you know kids cheating. So you could do that. Okay, we're gonna select next. Okay. Now I can look here again, and this is what the student view will be. You can look down there again, see that. And then if you want to, you can print a sample booklet. It'll ask you um, which format style. I just selected PDF. And um, if you want the teacher version, you can select teacher version or student version. And then you can do one column or two columns and you can create the booklet. Um, and that way, if you wanted a paper copy of it as you're walking around giving the test, you sure could. Or if your kids were going to take um, a paper pencil test. Okay, then I select next. Oops, let me see if I can. I don't know why I got out of that. Okay. Pick up here. Now, this is where I'm at. Sorry about that. Okay, now it comes up to publish the test. Okay, you have to publish a test in order to create test tickets. Okay, it just has to happen. Now you can leave a test and come back because you want to do something later, but if you want are ready to publish this test because you want your test tickets. So you have to click on publish. And that comes up here. Um, and we're gonna go down here to test administration. Okay, because you want to now go ahead and publish the test or excuse me it was already published so over here it said test is ready for use now you're going to go create this so that way you can set up um, the time oh, I keep starting this. ok 
Okay, now it comes up here and you can see that it's ready to create new test administration. So you're going to click this and then you can set the date. So I click today's date and then I'm going to give it a brief name, GR, I think it was 4 Science 426. Okay, and then you don't have to worry about any of this and you just go click create. It says new test administration has been created. So now you can go ahead and return to the test administration. And now I'll bring up this, and this is important because you have to put your online testing set up. This is where it's going to allow you to fine tune those dates. So I want to leave this only open for a week. So I have to go back. I'll go from the 23rd to the 30th of January. Then I'm going to go and change my time. I'm going to put it's 11 a.m. to 11.50 and I can go 11.50 and it says a.m. Now remember these times are shown for Eastern time so make sure you make that adjustment. Okay. I don't want to edit ticket instructions so I want to click save. And now I can return to test management. And now I'm ready to print the online tickets. So I'm going to click on print online tickets. And now I'm going to go up and I got to select it. Here's my test, that GR4 Science 426. I just want to pick the grade. It's for fourth grade. I'm going to put my name. I don't have to worry about test purpose. Now um, I have to select the teacher. And make sure that you're in the right year because yours will come up with those different teachers that have been rostered. So I'm going to make sure that I'm doing science for 1819. And now I'll come up and say your school uh, and then the teacher. And I have to select a teacher here. Again, this is not me. I'm, I'm in another school. And then you'll want to go to multiple student page because that brings all the test tickets up on multiple pages, but you can cut those apart and give those to each student. If you just want to have a one-page roster and you provide the information to the student, you could sure do that by doing the one-page roster. I like the multiple student page roster. So you click on um, online tickets and you'll see over here it comes up in another little pop-up window. You can see that it's waiting. Okay, When it is ready, you'll click on ready and then you click ready and it brings up your tickets and then you can print them off right there. I made another window because I wanted to white out students' names. So this is what it looks like when the tickets come up. They'll have their they'll have their first name here, their last name here, and then the code. When you give this to students, make sure that they go on this site and then they put in this code. And that's their ticket in to take the test. So I'm going to go back. When you're all done with this, you can return to test management. And it brings you right here, but you're basically done. You can close that out. And then you can go over here to home. You can go to the welcome page again. Or you can go right now to test management, and I'll show you how to create the copy. So if you just want to do a copy, you're back to this. You click create copy of test. You go down here, select the test that you want to copy. I'm just going to select this one right here. And then click next. And then you're going to have to give it a new abbreviation and a new name and select the level. And then you go to next and it's going to walk you through that same process. But if you don't create a new name, it's going to come up there and says you have to give this a new name. And then you copy it and then walk through the same steps. So that brings me to the end of the presentation. Please reach out to me by phone or email. Um, whatever is easier for you. I'm always glad to help you. I can come out there um, when it works for you and uh, do a little more teaching if that's what you need. Thank you.